In the beginning, I will show how to set up this extra large DIY cordless beat shade that I made from two beach blankets, tent poles, and old beach umbrella poles. Stick around to the end of the video to see how I made it and what materials I used. This version of the beach sunshade uses two old umbrella poles that have been dug in about a foot into the ground on either side. And then the tent poles have been put into the umbrella poles to support the umbrella poles and make a secure connection to the ground. I use a sand gopher tube to easily make the holes into the ground for the umbrella tubes. This works really well. The ends are attached onto the old umbrella tube. Here I was able to just put the loop over this and it stays on. You can also attach a cord and elastic and attach it around, something like that. And you can even use the original storage bag that came with it as sandbags on the end if you really need to. Boom, like that, and the sandbags will keep it weighted down. This definitely works great for low to medium wind. Now, if the wind was really picking up and really strong, you might want a center pole going back to support the top edge. So the way it's supported is it's held into the ground with these old umbrella poles that have been dug into the ground about a foot using the sand gopher, which is really easy, versus a shibumi beach shade that uses a sandbag and a line in the front to tie off the center. So the DIY version has no center line, works fine, it's just staked into the edges. It's just as easy to set up because you don't have to fill up a sandbag with sand, and then you also don't have the line in the front. This is the beach towel that we're going to be using to make the sunshade. So one edge is longer than the other. So we're going to use a shorter edge and I'm going to use two of these blankets and tape them together at the seam here to make one larger sail. So this front edge is going to be the leading edge. And that one we're going to take it fold it over to make a hem that the tent pole can pass through. Each corner does have these sand pockets. I think the ones on the front edge won't be a problem since we're going to fold over the leading edge like this, allow for some space for the tent pole to pass through. And then this is not going to be affected by the wind, but the tail end could catch the wind. So we're going to take this leading edge and Fold it over about one and a half, two inches, leave plenty of space to pass the poles through there. You can either sew that down if you have a sewing machine, or I'm going to try to use this no sew peel and stick fabric fuse tape. This stuff is supposed to be super strong. I'm going to try it on here and see if that works, and it'll be a lot easier than sewing it, especially if you don't have a sewing machine.
if the beach blanket that you're using has corner pockets for sand, you either need to sew or tape them down or just cut them out. I'm just going to cut these out. It's going to be easier. Be careful not to cut the rest of the fabric. Now, if you want to make a large shade, you're going to take two of these beach blankets and attach them together on one edge. You can sew it or you can use the fabric fuse tape like we did with the top edge. So this will make a very large beach shade. This is a 25 foot tent pole kit and these are heavy duty tent poles for large tents. So this is a kit so it needs to be assembled to whatever length you need it to. In this case I'm going to use the full length for the sunshade. So I'm going to show how to assemble these with the elastic. It also comes with this wire which might be hard to see on camera. This wire is going to be used like a needle to thread the elastic through each one of the poles. One of the poles is not like the others. It has two female ends, so this is going to be an end piece. Take one of these male tips, or if you're not going to use the male tips, take one of these washers, and we're going to tie the elastic cord in the end of it. Now take that male end just to hold it in place, put it in here, and we're going to pull this elastic cord along the length. And we want to mark the elastic cord at about 70% of the total length of this pole. Since the total pole length has 15 segments, we're going to mark the elastic at between 10 and 11 segments, which is about 70% of the total length. So I'm marking this cord at 70%, but we're not going to cut it yet. So take this wire that's included that we're going to use for threading and make a little loop and then twist it. Now tie off the other end of the elastic cord. And we're going to use the wire to start threading through. So you want to start on the end where you're threading it through the male tips such that it doesn't get snagged on every, anything when it's coming through to the other section. Pull that out. 
here you can see it comes right out the other end, doesn't get snagged. Once you've threaded through two sections, put the sections together and then move on to the next section. Once the elastic cord arrives at the end with the wire, be sure not to lose it back in there. Pull the cord out all the way until you see the black mark you made at 70%. And that's where we're gonna tie our end at. In this case, I'm gonna grab that male end piece, thread it on here. And now the remainder of the elastic shock cord can be cut off here. So now we have some tent poles that can be bent up into an arch, just like this. And then to take the tent poles apart, I always start at the center and under the center first and go ev pretty evenly on both sides. Now, go back to the beginning of this video to see how to assemble the beet shade. 